Do you want a better understanding of audio routing for streaming using Elgato Wavelink and just audio routing in general? Then stick around. I'm Justin Newton. I'm a gamer, sometimes streamer, podcaster, uh, and my real job is audio engineering. I do recording, editing, and mixing on music and audiobooks and podcasts and lots of things like that. And that's how my bills get paid. But I've also sometimes taught, you know, individual lessons and taught a class at the university, things like that. I use Elgato Wavelink for my streaming audio on my gaming setup, and I can often be found hanging around in the Elgato Discord, helping people out when they get confused. And while I've been doing that, I've often wished that there was a resource I could point people to that would explain audio routing in a way that's trying to give them an understanding of audio routing instead of just telling them exactly where to click to make things work. So when something goes wrong, they don't understand what it was that went wrong because they don't know why they clicked in those spots to begin with. And that resource doesn't seem to exist, so I guess I'm going to try to make it. This was my first attempt at a tutorial, and now that I've gone through the whole thing, I felt like I was talking for maybe 25 minutes, and it turned out to be more like an hour. Now, I'm swinging back through to make this new intro to maybe apologize for that length, uh, and I'll, of course, I'll chapterize the video, um, but I think there's a lot of good stuff in here, and I think it's all needed to really convey the understanding that I was trying to. I hope you like it. I hope you find it helpful. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you got something out of this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make any more of these at this point, but um, if there's interest, I definitely will, especially about some things that I had to leave out of this video because it was already so long. So here we go. Okay, so first of all, Here's, here's Wavelink. I'll make this a little bigger. Uh, that's very big. Okay, so you've got Wavelink installed. Uh, yours won't look exactly like this. It probably just will have your mic channel. It depends what device you, you get, but um, it'll have a bunch of blank spaces, and you can click to add more channels over here um, when you want to. But what is Wavelink doing? Well, Wavelink is a mixer. So that means that in order for it to work... In order for it to do anything, audio has to be routed into it, and then to hear the result, you have to listen to its output, right? So any of your apps, programs, audio sources, they need to come into one of these channels here. So you can see I have my microphone channel. It's the first one. This might be the only one you see. It depends on the device. I have a Wave XLR, uh, and this is um, my microphone's connected to it here. Then we have other channels. Uh, it creates a bunch of them for you using these virtual devices. But all of them have to have audio routed into them and then be listening to the output in order to hear what you're, what you're meant to hear. So my voice chat comes from Discord. My games are going to come into the game channel. And then I'm going to decide where that goes with these routing buttons and come down here to the bottom. In order to use Wavelink to control all of our audio, which is what I think you should be doing, basically we shouldn't be mixing and matching different things. We should have all of our audio route to Wavelink and then listen to Wavelink's outputs. And then you've got this one-stop shop for controlling and balancing all of your audio for both stream and, and your own mix. So first and foremost, you know the microphone's coming in. We can see my input right here. And then we see the outputs down here at the bottom. So here's my channels at the top. The outputs go at the bottom. The output right now that we're listening to, well, you're all listening to the stream mix because that's what's going over to my, um, to my stream computer via the capture card. Uh, but that's not important for right now. I'm going to put in these headphones. Um, so the monitor mix down here at the bottom, this one is for you to hear. Whether you're streaming or just gaming or doing whatever, the monitor mix is what you hear. So you can click this little drop down, and it's going to show all of your devices that you can play things on. I could switch this to my speakers, and it would be playing on speakers. I'm going to use the headphones connected here. 
So if there is audio playing um, during this video, it's not going to bleed through my microphone. I'm going to use headphones. If I'm just sitting here by myself watching YouTube or something, I'm probably going to flip this over to speakers and listen to those. When, whatever device I'm listening to at the time, that's the device I'm going to select for the monitor mix. So it could be my speakers, front panel up. You know, I have all these things. These are all the things that are connected on my on my computer. I'm going to leave it as this headphones. It's the built-in headphones on my Wave XLR. If you have a wireless headset or something that you're using, you'd select that here as Wavelength's output. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, whenever you click this little ear over here, like that, you can for that time, monitor the stream mix just to hear what your audience is going to hear. Um, but then you'd, you'd flip it back to the monitor mix because that'd be the one that you actually wanted to use. So um, all of these channels that Wavelink uses, Wavelink creates a bunch of these virtual audio devices. They appear as hardware devices to your computer, but they're virtual. They're not a physical thing in the real world, but as far as Windows is concerned, they are hardware devices, things like the voice chat channel, game, system, all of these. Um, there's several more. In fact, I'll show you. I'm going to move my taskbar over there so you can see. Um, an easy way to see these is if I go down to the bottom right corner, oh, and then I'm in the way. <laughs> Slide myself out of the way a little bit there. Uh, so down here, if I click this sound icon, if I right-click that, um, the quickest way to get to the panel I'm looking for is to click Sounds in here, and Windows is going to open this up. And here I can see my playback and recording devices from within this. So here are all the virtual devices that Wavelink creates. You can see with the Wavelink icon here, and then all my actual hardware stuff that exists there. So in the recording channel, the recording tab here, you can see mic in, Microphone effects, Wavelink monitor, and Wavelink stream. But these are recording devices. <laughs> you know, why are these all mixed the way they are? You just said that the monitor mix was the output of Wavelink. Well, in order for Wavelink to work the way it does, it has to present its outputs as recording devices to the computer, right? So any app like Discord or Skype or OBS or anything, specifically Discord and Skype are, are good examples. Whenever they are looking for something as their input, like your microphone, it needs to be presented to it as if it's a microphone. So it appears to Windows as a recording device. Okay, so it seems backwards, but that's the way it has to work. And likewise with playback devices, these are all the various channels in Wavelink voice chat system, SFX, music, game, browser, a couple of aux channels you can use for whatever you want, um, and then the headphones, because the headphones on my Wave device are directly uh, addressable by anything in the computer. These all appear as playback devices to the computer because any program that needs to send audio to you, the listener, they need to basically see these as speakers. So all the channels in Wavelink, which are Wavelink's inputs into the mixer appear as playback devices to the computer. And all of the outputs from Wavelink appear to the computer as recording devices. It's flipped that way so that the software can still use it as a mixer and your apps such as Discord or something like that are all going to work the way you're expecting them to. Makes sense once you think about it. <laughs> all right, so I'll get rid of that window. Uh, also, back in the Wavelink window, we have all of our channels and we have our individual volume sliders for whatever we want them to be, however the relative volumes we want them to be. And then at the bottom, we have these routing buttons. The headphones at the bottom of each channel uh, mean that's routing to the monitor mix, and this little antenna means the stream mix output. Um, Wavelink, besides these two, the monitor mix and the stream mix, Mix Wavelink has one other, you know, sort of hidden output, and that's called Microphone FX. The Microphone FX output contains just your microphone channel with whatever processing you have on it. So, like here, I have my uh, VST plugin effects that are processing my microphone. So, if I, um, I'm just going to load Discord. 
um, so that everybody can see what this looks like. Discord, um, Skype, any app like that that's meant to hear your microphone, you're going to want to use the microphone FX output for that. Um, so if I go into Discord voice settings, I'll drag this over so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, my input device is Wavelength Microphone FX. I'm not going to use Mic In. Mic In is the raw microphone without any processing on it. I mean, I, you could use that, it would work, but any processing you do in Wavelength won't affect it because that is not an output from Wavelength. That is just the raw microphone. So we use Microphone FX. And, and then likewise, you see for my output device, I've chosen Wavelength Voice Chat because I want the other people's voices in Discord to appear on this voice chat channel up here. Okay, so that's, that's what I've uh, set as my input and output. So, Discord's input is one of Wavelength's outputs. It's the one that contains just my microphone. And Discord's output is one of Wavelength's inputs because I want my friend's voice chat to appear on this voice chat channel. And then you can see I'm routing it to both the headphones and the stream. So presuming when I do a stream, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna uh, be chatting with people in Discord, the stream can hear them and I can hear them, right? So this is basic, basic operation. You can see here on my mic channel, I've not routed it to my headphones. That's because if I do route this to my headphones, it will play to my headphones, but it'll have a delay. Uh, and that's extremely confusing to hear. Um, the delay is a necessity of digital audio because any of this processing that's happening in Wavelink is happening on the host computer, which means my audio has to come through the microphone, through the interface, be converted to digital, and then processed by the computer and then played back out to me. And that always is going to have a delay, no matter what. The Wave microphones, such as Wave XLR or... Um, the Wave 1 or the Wave 3 mic, they do have a zero latency monitoring option, which you would get to by clicking on this. So these are sort of the properties of my microphone. Here we can see if we have a firmware update, we can set the sample rate, adjust the gain, um, turn on phantom power if I needed it. Um, then we have this section right here, these controls for headphone jack. So the output volume, and then the important part here, mic PC mix. So right now, I've slid mine all the way over to the PC side. Um, that means I'm actually not monitoring my voice right now. Um, if I slide it back over toward the middle, now in my headphones right now, I can hear my voice being fed back to myself without any delay. You can, this is a matter of preference. You can use this if you want to. I generally don't leave it this way because what I hear through this feedback is unprocessed. So it, in, it doesn't include my noise reduction, my compression, anything else that I've put on there for um, plug-in effects. And it just, you know, I, I don't need it. I don't need to hear the raw mic um, because technically that's not what my listeners are hearing anyway. So it's a preference. Some people like to hear a little bit of voice feedback. So this is how you control it. The farther you slide it over here, the more you'd hear just your voice and not the computer sound playing back to you. Um, anyway, I leave it over there like that. Also under here, we've got audio enhancements where th these are, this is specific again to um, the device you're using. In my case, Wave XLR, I've got these different low cut filters, clip guard, things like that. Generally speaking, enable those if they're available to you. Um, if you're using Wavelink using a Stream Deck Plus and not a Wave device, th then your options will probably be a little different. You, you know, this microphone channel will be coming from whatever your audio interface is. If it's some other USB mic or you know a, a, a standalone audio interface, um, they'll have their own controls probably for whatever their features are. Um, with a Wave device, you can also do save settings to hardware. Um, this is a really nice thing to have because like basically that means there's some onboard uh, memory on your Wave device that is remembering its gain settings. All of these settings um, and so they're recallable every time you restart your computer. If you, if I were to take this and go and connect it to a different computer, it's going to remember its settings, um, which is really nice. So, and click anywhere to get rid of that. Okay, so that's it. You know, digital audio, it always has latency. 
if you have a wireless headset or something like that, there's additional latency because of that. All this stuff kind of compounds. Um, in fact, the more plugins I put on any of these channels, they all have their own latency too. Some of them are very, very short. Some of them might be longer. It, it all depends, but all of this creates a little bit of latency. Another good reason probably you don't want to monitor your own headphone from here. If you do want to hear your voice, um, you would use this uh, PC, uh, mic PC mix slider. Um, these controls are also available on the Wave hardware device, um, selectable by, by uh, that knob. So that's sort of the theory of operation here. Your audio is flowing into the Wavelink channels and then from the output to your other apps like your recording software or Discord, something like that. There's a few other specifics um, that certain channels in Wavelink have that aren't universal. Most of these are just sort of whatever you want to use them for. Um, so if I you know, click add, I can add these other channels that I, I, I don't personally use, music, browser, SFX. Um, the SFX channel has a specific thing, so we'll add that for now. If I click in here, I can see root to microphone FX. So the idea behind this is that if you wanted to use something like a soundboard and you wanted people in Discord to hear that, you would tick this box. And now that microphone FX secret output that I talked about before, now that also contains your SFX channel, not just your mic. So it's your mic plus SFX channel. And any sounds that I route to the SFX channel from my soundboard app or whatever are going to flow to that. There's some compromise here because um, Discord, I'll call up Discord's settings again here for you. Discord's settings, Discord does a really good job of kind of muting your microphone when you're not using it. So by default, it's going to have this input sensitivity setting, and it's going to say automatically determine input sensitivity. You can see by that green bar, it's very accurately reacting to my voice, and it's muting when I'm not talking. Now, if I go trying to route sound effects into Discord, things that aren't a voice, then we've got to go adjust a bunch of things down here. We're going to want to turn off a bunch of noise suppression. Now, I'm not using noise suppression because I have that going in Wavelink already. I have my own stuff. Um, automatic gain control, things like that. Generally speaking, if you're going to be playing sound effects into Discord, Discord doesn't like that very much. So this is sort of, uh, I, I have trouble recommending doing this. If you do want to do it, then you need to untick this box. And now we have a simple threshold meter for when your mic is open. Um, and so you would drag this back and forth so that the mic is muted when you're not talking. And once again, I have a very clean mic channel because of the processing I have going on here, but yours might be very different. You know, you might have a lot of noise in the room, um, but any sound effect that's loud enough to go past this threshold will open the mic. Um, but, you know, Discord, Discord doesn't always love that. People run into trouble with that. Typically, there's a bunch of settings that you have to go and adjust in Discord in order to kind of make that work. So it's questionable value, but people wanted it, so they added it to Wavelink. So that's specific to the SFX channel. Okay, so I'm going to actually remove that from my Wavelink mixer. The only other channel that's that has something special about it is the game channel, and this is new as of um, Wavelink 1.9. The game channel now has this low latency mode. So I think this is outstanding because um, there is always a little bit more latency when you're using a system like this, and um, they've... Uh, they've made some updates to it so that it, it reduces the latency significantly. Um, I, I can tell the difference when I'm playing games. I've even started routing you know, my browser and stuff through this game channel in order to take advantage of that low latency because I could kind of see the difference when I watched a YouTube video. If it was just playing through my system channel or my browser channel, you could sort of see that there was some time delay <laughs> from the audio. Um, and this has basically fixed it for me. So I think that's fan a fantastic uh, addition. It does mean that you can't use VST2 plugins. You need to use VST3 plugins if you are putting any on your game channel. Generally, I don't recommend putting plugins on your game channel. You really shouldn't need to, but some people want to. Uh, just make sure that they are VST3 plugins in order to use that. 
I think it's really valuable. So now we need to make sure that we're routing audio into it into Wavelink correctly. We understand that we need to route audio into Wavelink and then listen to its outputs. So let's you know let's tuck into uh, actual actually doing that. Um, first of all, uh, let's click the settings cog here in Wavelink, and we can see here. Um, this is our software version. Uh, on the main page, there's a check for updates button. Um, I'm I'm only bringing this up because this seems this is another thing that that happens to a lot of people when they they pop into the Discord looking for help. Uh, whenever Wavelink gets an update, you'll see a window that looks like this. Uh, these are the update notes for whatever update Wavelink is about to download. So you can carefully read everything in here and make sure that first of all that it's something that you want. And then you decide, install update, remind me later, or skip this version. If I click skip, it's not going to remind me again until something after 1.9.3 comes out, right? So if you do download that, like I often wait for a while. Like I, my system is working right now. It's rock solid. I don't have problems. If I did have problems, then I would be interested in an update. Um, but what I would do is I would read through and I would try to see you know, where, you know, here's, here's all the new features in 1.9. And usually down at the bottom, we've got bug, bug fixes and performance improvements. Is, is my bug that I was experiencing listed here? If, you know, as, as fixed, if so, then yeah, I'll probably um, jump onto that update. If I'm not having problems, I, you know, <laughs> I kind of consider systems, consider is your system mission critical or not? Um, if I need this to be working correctly because I'm going to do a stream and I don't want my audio to fail or not work in some way, um, then maybe I skip an update or I postpone that update and I don't do it right away. I'm in the Discord all the time, so I, I see what kind of problems people are having, but sometimes there's some bugs to work out whenever a new version comes out. So, you know, don't leap at this if you don't feel like you need to. Also in these settings are audio effects. Uh, you'll find the... VST2 folder is usually not populated on a fresh install, so you'll need to click this button and browse and find where that folder is meant to be on your computer. This is because there are four or five or maybe six places that VST2 plugins sometimes install themselves. VST2 was kind of a mess. VST3 is much better. There's a bunch of changes that happened in the system. It's just much better. So you may not even need VST2. If you happen to install some plugins that only have a VST2 version, then you will need to find them there in order to get them working. The RIA plugs uh, plugins are an example of that. So I have populated that here. One other thing here, the auto scale plugin windows button. That's not a super important thing, but I have seen a couple of bug reports in the Discord where somebody's plugin was not responding to clicks, or maybe it wasn't even displaying correctly. It looked very strange. And just toggling this on and off kind of brought it all back to life. So that's a possible bug fix for that. And then in the advanced settings, we have the input and output buffer. This is going to default to medium. Probably don't change that. <laughs> Setting it to small is going to mean that Wavelink is harder on your computer. Um, Audio requires a lot of CPU headroom in order to come through cleanly without crackles and things like that. So if you're hearing crackles and errors in your audio, your buffer size may be too small. Then again, sometimes I've seen reports of people who set their buffer to large and were having problems and setting it back to medium fixed it. So generally, if you're not having a problem with your audio, um, you don't need to touch this. That'll be a troubleshooting measure if you're having a problem. Okay, so next, app volume and system preferences. So up here at the top, we have this like uh, horizontal sliders uh, icon. When I click that, I get this Windows app volume and, and pre device preferences window. Here I can set my, easily set my uh, defaults for Windows. So what Windows uses as its default device is important. <laughs> uh, I set my default output device to Wavelink Game. Now you could set this to whatever you want, but most people we find erroneously set it to headphones or speakers, thinking, isn't that, you know, that's what I used to do. 
we're switching our whole audio system over to use Wavelink. If we're using Wavelink, we want all of our audio to go into the Wavelink mixer, and then we want to listen to the output. So we don't want to root audio around Wavelink. So instead, we, we choose a channel that we're going to use. I like to use the game channel. Number one, not all games have audio output settings, so they don't always allow you to choose what device they're sending their audio to. And some games outright don't follow the rules. So even if you saw the game down here in the list and, and changed it to output to the game channel, some games don't listen to that. One of the main games that I play is, is like this. So the only way to get that game to output to the game channel is to set the Windows default to game. The, uh, the, uh, another advantage is this new low latency mode that we, we talked about up here means that generally like anything that's routed to game is going to come through um, with less latency, uh, and that's better. So I set my default output to Wavelink game. That means every game without me having to change anything is automatically going to go to that game channel. And in fact, any new app is going to go there. And the only time I need to adjust any of these is if I want them to go somewhere else. Things that you might want to go somewhere else, you know, Steam, um, the, these few like instances of that, anything that has, makes little beeps and stuff like that, system interface noises, stuff like that, I might want to root somewhere else. You see controls here for Discord. The thing about these is like one of these is Discord's system sounds and another one is, is uh, something else like Discord's actual voice chat. Discord has its own settings, so you don't need to mess with them here. So don't worry about any of that. Um, system sounds, um, it never lets you change these. I do not know why that's here. Thanks, Windows. But anyway, if you end up with some other app, um, I'll throw out an example. So I have this little app called Talk Toggle that uh, is a way of muting my microphone with the a touch of a button, or I actually have, have it mapped to a joystick key because I play a game that uses joysticks. So this app makes a little beep whenever I mute or unmute. So I'm going to just do that quickly. Uh, so there, I just muted and unmuted it, and because it made its beep, Talk Toggle showed up in the list. Now I manually moved that, instead of following the default to the game channel, I manually moved that to Wavelink System. So Wavelink System, as we can see right here, is not muted, uh, is not routed to the stream mix. So I can hear that little beep, but my stream doesn't when I mute the mic. So that's, what's, that's what you're going to do for any app that you want to hear, um, but you don't want your stream to hear. Um, just route it to a channel like System or whatever, so you can individually change it without having to change the game. You know, So Game Channel is still going to both mixes, and the System Channel only goes to me. It does not go to the audience. Um, and that's how we adjust that. Now, the default input. This one, you're going to select Wavelink Microphone FX. If you select mic in, any app that's just receiving audio by default is going to hear your unprocessed microphone, as we said earlier. So we want to use that microphone FX, the secret output that contains just your mic. This way, any app on Windows that I install and receives microphone audio is going to automatically grab that until I set it differently. So they're going to hear, you know, this is for Zoom or something like that. These apps do have their own settings, but this way the default for your system will be microphone FX. So even if you don't remember to change anything, it ought to grab the correct one. Discord, likewise, would default to Wavelink microphone. I still recommend going into your Discord voice settings and actually setting it to microphone FX rather than leaving it at default. Because if I leave it at default, it is going to use my, my correct microphone because I've set my default correctly here. Um, but this does sometimes cause other problems. Sometimes if you connect or disconnect a device from your computer, Windows will automatically change what your default is, and that that makes things get a little shaky. Sometimes you find out that, oh, I'm, my system's using the wrong microphone. Why is that? Well, it's because we left something on default instead of manually setting it. So Wavelength Microphone FX, now that's never going to change. It's not going to change when I connect or disconnect another device, right? Windows is going to... Um, just leave it alone because Discord has its own settings. So we've gone over the defaults, we've routed our audio in. Okay, so uh, besides the virtual channels that Wavelink creates, 
Um, you can also add hardware devices to this. So one of these that I've done is I've added the line in uh, on my computer's sound hardware. Um, that's because I have a dual PC set up in my stream computer. The alerts and stuff that are coming from OBS on that stream computer are coming back into the line in on this computer. So that appears right here on this channel. You can see that I have not I have I've not routed it to the stream mix because that would cause this echoey loop, right? Stream sounds will come into Wavelink, and then that would go back to the stream mix to OBS. So that would be a loop. Um, I've routed them to me because I want to hear them, but the audience is already hearing them from OBS, so I don't need to route that there. That would be a loop. Um, Wavelink also has these aux channels. Um, the aux channel is a virtual device that you can just use for whatever. It's like, you know, maybe you filled up your other channels and you still want more. It has these two aux channels. When you add a hardware device, it will take the place of one of these channels. So the line in is currently aux2. It's taking the place of Wavelink's aux2. And then I added this aux1 channel um, for routing other things too. They're, they're all muted, but it's just sitting here ready to receive audio if I needed to route something to it. So once again, audio flows into these channels. We balance it with the sliders to hear what we want to hear. Um, if you want these to, to be linked, you click this little uh, chain icon at the top and then the bars will move in tandem. Um, or you can untick that and you know independently adjust the stream volume versus the volume that you hear. Okay, um, it's time to plug some of this stuff into OBS. So uh, let's go ahead and launch OBS. And here we have it. So this is a blank... OBS setup. Basically, what we're going to do to set things up is we need to bring our audio in here. I'm not. This isn't going to be an OBS tutorial, um, but showing you how this is meant to be connected does require me to kind of show OBS a little bit here. So, first of all, I personally don't like to use these global devices. So here, let me do that again. So what I've got is. OBS um, settings, and then if we go to audio, if this is a fresh OBS install, you're going to find that like desktop audio and mic audio will have, these will be populated with something. Um, generally, I prefer to not use these global devices, but instead add audio sources to my scenes. Um, and this is so that like if you have your starting screen or your ending screen or a pause screen, whatever is going on, um, you don't need like your game audio or your microphone and things like that to be included in those. Uh, so this way your audio sources are in the scene. So if you're showing a scene that contains the audio, it will be there. And then if you switch to a scene that doesn't contain that audio, it won't. Um, inversely, back in the audio settings, if you have these global devices on, those audio devices are always there, which means you would have to manually mute them in OBS or I guess mute them in Wavelink, you know, you have to kind of take an extra step to get them to not show up if you were to change scenes and didn't want them to be there anymore. So that's just my recommendation, but you can do these um, right here in global if that's what you want. One thing that I want you to set right away is on this audio page under advanced, there's a monitoring device. This is going to be for any sounds that are generated within OBS. This is usually stream alerts. Right, so anything, um, you know, follower alerts, anything like that, that makes a sound that you want to hear, you need to set a monitoring device. Your audience will always hear it, but you need to set a monitoring device. So this one I set to Wavelink system because once again in Wavelink, I want this to come into a channel that I hear but isn't routed to the stream. Because if it's routed back to the stream, you'd get this loop of echoing alerts over and over again. So we set this to Wavelink system. So now any device that I'm monitoring from within OBS, when I'm telling it to play the sounds back to me, those are going to come into Wavelink system. Now um, we're going to add an audio source. Now by the, the sort of default way to use o to to use uh, Wavelink with OBS is this stream mix. I want all of that audio that I've built this out of the stream. I've balanced my microphone with my game sound, voice chat if I'm if I'm uh, in a team, um, anything like that that's being routed to the stream mix that I want my audience to hear, that all comes through on one source thanks to this stream mix. So we would just do audio input capture because once again, the stream mix appears as a microphone. 
And let's just call this whatever you want, I guess, dream mix. But this is going to be the full mix. And to get to do that, we're going to select Wavelength Stream. And here we are. My stream mix is receiving my audio. Uh, there's one other change that happened in uh, Wavelength 1.9 um, that has confused a few people. And that is in this stream mix, this is a drop down box. It used to be a useless drop down box that contained nothing except this little bit of information here that said, select Wavelength Stream as the audio source in your favorite streaming software, just like we did here. But now, so, so by default, it's going to say this right here, no additional output device. Now, if I set that right now, my capture card is not going to hear my audio, so I won't be talking to you anymore. So I set that back to my capture card so that you can hear me. Um, this change is just for things like this, like a two PC setup. So now I can very easily just select my capture card as the stream mix output device and audio goes directly to it. Regardless of whether you have this set, you can see right here, it's still going to the stream mix in OBS. So if you're just using one PC streaming, you go ahead and leave this on no additional output device. That is totally fine. It's going to work the same as it always did. Uh, as you can see, the stream mix is still active regardless of how this is set. So what else do I need to do in OBS? Nothing. <laughs> That's it. It's done. This is the only audio source you need in OBS if you just want your stream mix as you've constructed it here to be heard by your audience. That's all you need. It's done. The only thing that happens that complicates things is people ask the question about what about my VOD track on Twitch, which I don't want to contain my music. Um, I don't personally get into this because I don't really play other music on my streams, but I know a lot of people do. So there's a slight complication that happens if you need to separate for uh, a VOD track. And it's a complication with a compromise, right? Because it means that we're going to have to take the music channel mixing out of Wavelink. So I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, let's assume that I added a music channel. So here's my music channel, and I would route whatever it is, Spotify, to the music channel. Here's what I need to do to make sure that that doesn't go onto the Twitch VOD track. First of all, I need to take it out of the stream mix. Okay? So now I have my music channel in Wavelink, but it is not going to the stream mix, so it will not appear, appear in this audio source. Then I need to go and add another audio source, an audio output capture, because I need to grab, you know, once again, it is, a, it is an output that is uh, appearing as an input. It's that reverse thing that we talked about before. So this is going to be music. I'm adding music, and from this list, I can see all the inputs into Wavelink, because I selected audio output capture. So I'm going to say Wavelink Music. So now I have my stream mix and I have music. So if I was playing Spotify into the music channel in Wavelink, it would also appear right here. But please note that if I adjust the volume of the music in Wavelink, it will not affect the volume of the music in OBS. I need to either adjust that here, or hopefully whatever you're playing the music on has its own volume adjustment. And I recommend using those controls instead, because if, if Spotify is playing into the music channel and you use Spotify's master volume, it will control the music as you hear it here with the routing to the monitor mix and as the stream hears it, because that's going to be the one control that's going to affect both of those at the same time. And if you adjust, if you want to hear the, the music not very loud, you would turn this down here and that does not affect the volume that the stream hears the music. Um, so there's one other thing we need to do to make sure that this doesn't go to the main Twitch track so it will not appear in your VODs. So that's going to be in uh, settings, and we're going to go to output. And right here, um, we need to make sure output mode is set to advanced at the top. And then you're going to click Twitch VOD track. We're going to enable that. And the VOD track is going to be number two, whereas the main audio track is number one. So Twitch uses number two as its VOD track. So now we've enabled the VOD track. We're going to say OK. And now either click the three dots or right click somewhere in here and open Advanced Audio Properties in OBS. And we need to remove the music from channel two. OK. So right here is all the, all the different audio channels that each of these devices are going to play to 
through OBS, the stream mix is going to go to all of them, or basically it's going to go to one and two. So anything that's in my stream mix, and that does not include music because we didn't route it right here, anything that's in that stream mix is going to go to one and two. One being the main stream, two being the VOD audio track. And then music is just going to go to one. So the live audience hears it, but it is un we unselected two, so it's not going to appear in the VOD track. Uh, and that's it. And then the other thing that we should do is I should show you about getting those Twitch alerts that I was uh, saying we, we need to route back. In my case, I wrote back, route back through that line in. Um, but if you're using a single PC streaming, um, or actually in, in both cases, so let's say that your alerts would probably be a browser source. So this is going to be stream alerts. And there's instructions from whatever you're using, you know, stream elements or whatever to generate your alerts. Here we have this, and we want to control audio via OBS. So here is my stream alerts, and there it is in the audio mixer. Once again, I'm going to go to advanced audio properties. Um, stream alerts, we want to go to, to all, both audio channels, but this audio monitoring we want to change. So for stream alerts, we want to change it to monitor and output. So output means the audience hears it who are watching your stream. Monitor means I hear it because back to the OBS settings, in audio, I set this monitoring device as Wavelink system. So now in advanced audio properties, this one, is, the stream alerts is set to monitor and output. That means its output, those alerts, are going to go to the monitoring device, which is system. And once again, system is not routed to the stream mix because if it was, it would be a loop. It would be feeding back into Wavelink and then that would be going back to the stream uh, and we don't want that loop. Okay, next, uh, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to get rid of that stream alerts um, device and let's just subtract these so we're keeping everything nice and simple. I'm going to get rid of this mu music channel. We're going to assume that we're just doing this kind of the normal way. And I'm even going to subtract uh, the music channel from my Wavelink so it looks normal to me. Um, let's talk about actually processing your microphone because the one of the main advantages of using Wavelink over some other microphone system is that we can use uh, VST plugins on the channel. So over here in Wavelink, at the bottom, we see this little like sound wave thing. Um, the, the lit up green means that I have plugins enabled here. When I click this, I get this audio effects dialog. There's a few things I can do in here. One is I can choose whether the audio, the audio effects are applying to the monitor mix or the stream mix or both. I think usually you're going to want these to apply to both, but in case you have audio effects that you only want to apply to one of them, you can disable that here. And then here's my audio effects. Don't worry about what's in there. These are not free things, so you probably, in, until you know what you're doing and what you're actually looking for, you might not use the same effects as me, but um, this is where your effects are going to be listed. So let's just pick another channel. I'm going to pick the system channel to work out of. This is what you'll see um, if you don't have any effects in place right now. So for one thing, it's going to link you to the marketplace where you can download some effects. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click the marketplace button at the top. And what that's going to do is open up a browser window that looks like this. Um, so I'm signed into the uh, Elgato Marketplace. It's going to take me right to the audio effects. And you see these four right here to start with. Um, these are the ones that Elgato has produced themselves. There's a noise removal plugin. There's an equalizer. Um, there's this compressor. And then there's the NVIDIA broadcast noise removal, which uses um, NVIDIA's own algorithm. It processes on your GPU if you have uh, an, a new enough NVIDIA GPU. This plugin, it has a history. <laughs> it's a little buggy. Um, it's gotten better over the years, but I still see people have trouble with it quite a bit. So I'm not really going to talk about it specifically. It's a fairly powerful bit of noise reduction, but it causes problems. If you're experiencing crackling and strange sounds with your audio, check if you have this plugin on. It might be causing weird things to happen, and the solution might be to remove it. Um, so other than that, I'm not really going to talk about it very much because it's a little bit problematic. Besides these four that are in here in the marketplace, um, you can also find this Wavelink recommended VSTs page 
This is a little older, um, but you can find it by Googling, Wavelink Recommended VSTs. And there's just sort of a sheet here with a bunch of mostly free stuff that you can check out. The, a lot of these are from third parties. You see they've included um, you know, the ones that Elgato themselves made. Um, so there's a bunch more different effects that you can get and try out in here. But for the sake of the marketplace, they're, they're trying to make this a little easier. The plugins in here do get updated sometimes, and it's not always clear that that has happened. <laughs> so some of the bugs we've been seeing is that somebody had, you know, there's been, there was an update and now my equalizer, you know, my Elgato equalizer isn't working. It's probably that the plugin didn't update along with Wavelink or something like that. So if you just, you know, say uh, open in Wavelink or you might have to click through to the equalizer page um, and see the get button again, if you have this installed, I'm pretty sure what happens is, yeah, see, like, I don't have the compressor installed right now, and it says get instead of saying open in Wavelink. So that's probably a sign that it's either out of date or not installed. Um, but if you're having some trouble, check and make sure, because I don't think they have much of a system in place yet for um, showing or notifying you when those updates happen. So for the sake of it, let's install the compressor right now. So I'm just going to click get. Um, if I wasn't logged in, it would it would ask me to, but I'm going to say open Wavelink. I'm going to do this command prompt thing. Okay, the plugin's in installed, the compressor version that has been installed successfully. It might say updated if it was an update. And then one new plugin has been found uh, because that wasn't previously installed. Okay, so I've installed some plugins, whichever ones I wanted. Now I need to figure out how to make myself sound better, but here's what I know. If I click this button and monitor my voice to myself, it's going to come back with a delay, and that's really tough to listen to. Even if it doesn't, you know, and, and then of course the zero latency monitoring doesn't include plugins, so I can't use that. So how do I hear myself clearly in, in uh, such a way that it, it'll actually make sense and, and, and work well and I can adjust while listening? So I recommend doing this. So here we have the stream mix set up as our audio input. What I'm going to suggest is make a recording of just your raw mic in OBS and then make your adjustments on that. So actually to do this, I'm going to, you could just mute, I'm just going to delete this stream mix from this OBS right here. And instead I'm going to add an audio input capture and this is going to be raw mic. And I'm going to select the thing I told you not to select. I'm going to select mic in. So now OBS over here is hearing, I'm gesturing the wrong side because <laughs> anyway, OBS right up here is hearing the raw mic without my plugin processing that I have running in Wavelink. So at this point, I can just say start recording and it's going to show me a, a warning because I have no video source in my OBS. Uh, that's fine. I only want the audio anyway. So now I am recording my raw voice in OBS. I should read something or just speak normally for a while. Maybe you want to yell really loud and then speak kind of softly and just kind of get some variation in there so you have something to work with uh, to hear your voice and then be able to process it. That should be good. So stop. We've clicked stop. So now I've just recorded that video file. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove raw mic from this, and I am going to add a media source. This is going to be mic example audio. It really doesn't matter because this isn't, we're not keeping these. So this, and now I'm going to select a local file. Um, it's probably in your user folder under videos this is where OBS stores things. So here's the video I just created. I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to click loop. So now what's happening is, as we can see, and I was just checking to make sure this wasn't blasting you all with its source, but it's not. Okay, um, I'll, I'll tell it to you later, but as you can see, it is now playing back that video that I recorded, which is just a sample of my raw microphone. Now, here's what I need to do. Uh, once again, we have OBS audio settings, monitoring devices, Wavelink system. So now I'm going to click the dots, advanced audio properties. I'm going to change this one to monitor and output. 
and I'm gonna mute that for me. So now we see that that raw voice recording is playing back on Wavelength system channel. And it's playing back on a loop, so I don't even have to do anything. So now I am going to, I'm just gonna turn these down so it doesn't blast anything. I'm going to enable these to the, the mixes so that we can hear them, and, and what I can do is put plugins on them. So right now I can open this up and I can click Add Effect. Um, and let's assume that we added the Elgato effects. So first of all, I'm going to choose Elgato EQ. And so here is the Elgato EQ processing that, that recording. Uh, and now I'll go ahead and enable it. And then speak kind of softly. And just So now the stream and uh, I can hear it. Uh, to hear your voice and then be able to process it. That should be good. So, so now I am recording we can hear the audio, the equalizer is affecting my voice. Something or just speak normally doing this low cut, and taking away all the sounds. Kind of so maybe I would make some adjustments. Maybe it's a little boomy here. Something to work with uh, to hear your voice and then be able to process it. That okay, so I'll just take those out so that I can talk over it without it being too distracting. But basically, listening to that playback without myself speaking, I can adjust the uh, settings on this EQ um, to get it the way I want. You know, I'll you know, add a node here and give it a high boost. Maybe I'll cut that sort of nasal frequency that I often hear in my own voice. Um, I adjust the low cut if I needed it. My microphone already had a low cut built in, but it's not that significant. But anyway, I do what I need to do here within the EQ. Okay, great. So now let's add another effect. Let's add the noise removal. So here's the noise removal effect. Highly recommended that what you do here is actually put noise removal first. So we're going to just drag that up. So noise removal happens before the EQ. This is probably not, this order isn't super important, but in this list I can open the settings within those EQs by clicking this cog. So here we've, we, we've reopened uh, the EQ settings. And um, let's go ahead and add another effect. Let's add a compressor. So here's the Elgato compressor. Now this one has a little sort of tutorial. This one has a little bit of the thing that I'm creating here built in. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna skip that and I'll adjust uh, my threshold and we can see when it's starting to compress my mic. They, they, do, they do a good job with this sort of vi helping you visualize uh, what is meant to happen here and they have these settings where you can adjust the ratio probably leave these alone for now. Auto makeup is a great place to be uh, because any reduction you do is going to be automatically compensated for. So as I drag this down, I actually don't want to just make myself super quiet. I, I want to also turn up the result at the end. Um, and then if I decide I want the whole thing louder, you can um, untick that and, and just manually adjust the output gain instead. But usually auto makeup is fine. And so you can visually see what's going on. Like I said, the compressor does have this, this sort of, uh, it almost has built in what I've done here, um, but I wanna be able to do it with everything, not just the compressor. So we close that window. Once again, this is just my example. Audio is just looping and I'm using uh, my ears to, to work through uh, what I want things to sound like. We get questions a lot about presets. There are presets available and you'll find a lot of YouTube videos saying like use these settings for this microphone or something like that. Um, I find that to have really, really questionable value because your voice is different. Your room is different. Even if you're using the same mic as someone, I mean, different microphones sound quite different from each other, but even if you're using the same microphone as somebody, it doesn't mean that you need the same EQ changes on yours than they do. So I think it's really important to actually go through this process and listen to what's needed. You know, it's not like every microphone will, you know, you'll find people basically saying like, here's how you get clarity, like boost this. Well, not if your voice already has enough of those frequencies in it. You know, it's, you need to listen to what's missing and add some in or listen to what you have too much of and take a little bit out. A lot of the times with with processing less is more. Now, I, I this is going to be way way too long a video without it being kind of a tutorial about what to listen for and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do another one uh, getting to that. There's a lot to learn about how to process audio. 
in my opinion, there are no shortcuts. There is no preset that you can download that's just going to make your mic sound right. You have to listen and hear how the microphone is hearing your voice in your room and adjust to that. And likewise with a compressor, there is no magic settings for compressor. I mean, the default ratio and timing settings are probably fine, but as far as finding how much compression to be using, you really do just have to play with the threshold until it gets enough. You see how like the peaks and stuff, all that variation, as I drag that threshold down, you can visually see how it's turning into just a flat sausage. You know, the more compression you use, the more it's just going to be a flat sausage, and eventually it'll be overcompressed. but you really have to kind of do that um, and hear what happens when you overcompress yourself uh, to kind of know when you've gone too far. The main thing to worry about with, the com with going too far in a compressor is the more you do this, the more you squish it down, the more it's going to bring up the background noise. And there's only so much... Um, that noise reduction here, the Elgato noise removal, as an example, can do. Now, um, other kinds of processing that you'll see out there that will be in this uh, in in um, this list here of all the suggested plugins, um, gates are one that comes up a lot. I don't love gates personally because I don't like hearing whenever you speak, kind of all the background noise leaps into place, right? Or, or if they're set really tight, they can cut out parts of your words and stuff. So I use gates very, very gently and usually in expander mode. So expander is like instead of just being binary, when you sp stop speaking, the gate just closes and mutes you completely. Instead of that, we have it so it just sort of fades down a little bit when you're not speaking. So when the gate's engaged, it's not totally muted or at least it takes a second or two to sort of slowly mute your voice. Um, that usually comes out better and sounds smoother. Uh, and then additional processing enhancers. Oh, oh God. I All of that stuff is completely not needed. If you think you need an enhancer, I mean, go, go to it, I guess, but probably you don't. Uh, the human voice really is very mid-range fo mid focused, and especially if you're streaming games there's other audio in there with you. You don't need to be like this hyped larger than life sound, a more focused sound that's just focusing on the actual frequencies of your voice is going to cut through and sound better in a stream mix uh, over game audio and things like that. So that's highly recommended to, to just kind of ignore those other processing. And then... Um, uh, so something you might use is, is a de-esser. A de-esser is, again, it's not always needed. I see a lot of tutorials where it's like, here, you got to have all this stuff. You really don't always need that, but some microphones have a lot, a lot of high end, and you might find those S's and T's are coming through really harshly. Um, a a de-esser, all that is, is a compressor that is really only listening to those high frequencies and working on those to uh, compress them when they come through too harshly. So that can be useful. Uh, condenser microphones, I'm using a dynamic microphone here. Condenser microphones can tend to have a little bit more of that hypey top end. And so it might be more common for uh, dynamic, or, uh, sorry, for condenser microphones, especially cheap ones, to have kind of too much hype in the high end. I think that's kind of a little secret of how um, microphones that are on the cheaper side tend to convince buyers that they sound really good in hi-fi is because they have all this sparkly boosted high end and you can hear the breath and all this stuff come, come through so clearly and loudly, but it often just makes things harsh. There's actually very little in the human voice that's way up there, you know? You need your T's and your other consonants and stuff to come through but you don't need them to be exceedingly loud to sound good. And in fact, you'll probably sound worse. So that's the thing. Exciters, um, <laughs> that's kind of a way of kind of making your voice sound like that when you probably didn't want it to sound like that to begin with. So so anyway, that, that's about all I'll say, I think, for now, as far as voice processing is concerned. There isn't a shortcut. Um, I have a few other suggested videos right now as if, if somebody is wanting to learn more about how to process your voice, but it's a learning experience. There's no shortcut. Uh, maybe I'll make another video that goes a little bit deeper into it later on. But that's about it. Now, 
what, <laughs> what have we done here? We just uh, set up our microphone and processed it to our liking using this uh, looped recording of ourselves. Uh, but this is on the wrong channel, <laughs> right? This is on the Wavelink system channel. So here's one more step. So first of all, I'm going to stop uh, OBS from playing this back. I can now open up this audio effects panel, and down here under the Add Effect button, you see Import Preset and Export as Preset. So this is basically what I've done. This setup, this uh, uh, chain of effects, makes my microphone sound good. Um, it first hits the noise removal, then the EQ, then the compressor, and I say, I've worked it out. I've dialed in my settings. This sounds good to me. Now I'm going to go Export as Preset, and it's going to come up with something. I don't know where you want to save it. I put mine in Documents. Here I have a few uh, Wavelink Presets folder, and I would just name this whatever it is. So this is my microphone, and maybe I put a date in it, you know, the date. And I save that. And now I can go to any other channel. You would go to your mic channel, and I would click that. So let's assume that this is my microphone channel. I would click the Add Effect button, and instead I would say Import Preset. And now I can load, where did I put it? Documents, Wavelink Presets, uh, my microphone date. And there we go. I've restored that setting to my actual microphone track. I can now remove these plugins one by one from the system channel because I actually don't want any processing on my system channel. Um, I can turn that back on because I do want to be monitoring that channel uh, the next time I stream. And there we have it. Now that processing has been moved to my microphone channel. Now, in my case, I just put it on the wrong channel as a demo, so I'm going to take those out of there before I forget. Okay. Uh, and that's that's the size of it. You've you've processed your microphone, and then you've applied those effects to your microphone. So now any app like Discord where you set microphone effects as its input, that will work. And those effects are applying to your uh, stream mix. So once again, let's get rid of this media source because we don't need that looping anymore. And once again, we're going to add audio input capture stream mix and select stream mix, um, wavelink stream, like we did before. And now OBS is hearing my processed microphone. So that's, that's how I would recommend doing that. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you got something out of it. I hope you feel like you understand audio routing better and wavelength better. And hopefully it'll solve some things that might be, have been getting you stuck before. Uh, Please leave me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed it, what you got out of it. And especially if you'd like to hear more about specifically like the things that I had to skip, like detail, how to process your microphone, how to listen, how to use plug-in effects like compressors and EQs, um, what noise reduction does and how to use it best, gates, de-essers, you know, really get into the nuts and bolts of those things. It's definitely would have to be a whole separate video. Uh, and like I said, there's no shortcuts for that. So if you're interested in that, it would probably be another long one like this. <laughs> if you're interested in another long one like this, please let me know in the comments. You can find links to me and everything I do down in the description. Have fun out there.